And then I have all of my makeup. Well, actually, that's a lie. I have just the portion of my makeup that I use on a daily basis because being blind has not stopped me from being a total fashion and beauty junkie. Hi, Allure, I'm Molly Burke, and welcome everybody to my beauty space. Come on in. So this is my bedroom, and somebody once told me it was like the set of a 90s girl high school movie, and that for me was a total win. This is my crazy animal wall. My brother compared it to like a serial killer who took a stuffed animal from every one of his victims. I like to think I just never grew out of being four. John Mayer all of a sudden like has this in some of his Instagram stories, and I'm like, who did it first, who did it better? Debatable. When I was four years old, I was diagnosed with a rare eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa, which causes the progressive loss of vision. So by the time I was 14, I ended up losing the majority of my vision, and I'm now considered uh, about totally blind. Like all disability, it's a spectrum, and actually about 90% of blind people have remaining vision. So in my case, I see a little bit of light and a little bit of shadow. For example, if somebody was standing in front of a really bright sunlit window, I can like see the outline of them because of that contrast and the blocking of light. And lots of glitter, I see lots of glitter. All the glitter. So now I wanna show you my beauty spaces and how I've made them work for me. Let's go. So this is my vanity. This is where I spend all of my makeup loving time. You'll notice it doesn't have a mirror. I don't need a mirror to do my makeup, so instead I get this like fun color changing sequin wall and neon signs. I see light, which means I can see sequins and glitter, which is really the only things I need in life. I'm missing so much visual intake during the day, my brain like craves it. So all of these things that I've filled my environment with help give my brain that happy, good endorphin feeling that you guys get from like seeing the world around you. I first started getting into makeup when I was 12 years old. I've always been fashion obsessed, and so makeup seemed like the right next move. So it took a lot of practice to get used to, and I really started to figure out over the next few years of makeup collecting, dare I say hoarding at times, what products work best for me, what I should avoid. The thing about being blind, is if something gets put in a different place, it's lost forever. It's an organized mess in my mind. I know where everything is, I take it out from that place, I put it back in that place when I do my routine every single day. And on certain products, I even have tactile markers or braille labels. So this one has braille. I know this is all that glitters because I've made a block of four Gs for glitter. It's all that glitters. I love brands like Too Faced that do a lot of texture on their packaging and a lot of fragrance in their product because it's just like another fun way for me as a blind person to enjoy the cosmetic. Um, and basically when it comes to using my palettes, I memorize where shades are. For a long time growing up, I, I wasn't really confident enough to play with lip color, but once I started to become confident, lipsticks are definitely what I have the most of. I keep them in a color order. Each row has kind of a color theme. Back row is brights and bolds. Mid row is kind of purples and nudes, and then front row is peaches and pinks. If I ever am confused as to which color is which, I'll ask a sighted friend, a sighted minion as I call them, my sighties, or I can use an app on my phone and I can just point my phone at something and be like, hey, random human, what is this thing? And they'll be like, oh, that looks like the purple shade. Back here, I have this adorable bee mug that one of my followers sent me. My fans, I call them my killer bees. And I have a bee necklace, I have a bee tattoo. Bees are the thing and it's because my dad used to call my mom and I his killer bees. Whenever I was nervous for something, he'd be like, oh, you're gonna kill it, don't worry. And then our last name is Burke, so it starts with a B, so it all just got shortened to like, you're gonna be fine, you're the killer bees. And then I have this little tactile trail of bees that leads right from my vanity to the light switch in the bathroom, so I'll show you this next. I try to have my aesthetic really flow from my bedroom right into this space. I try to keep all the product in the drawers. Luckily, I have ample drawer space in my bathroom. And then just kind of some of the cute aesthetic stuff on top. I have my unicorn nightlight. Because I only see light, if I have to go to the bathroom in the night, I'm like, follow the unicorn, follow the unicorn glow. And then when I get to the unicorn, I know I'm almost at the bathroom. It probably looks a bit like 
a mess, but it actually, for me, is very organized. I know where everything is, just like my vanity, everything has its place and it stays in its place, it comes out, it goes back into that spot. And then in terms of things from there, it's all about texture. So for example, these two tubes might look like they would feel similar, but this one is more of a shiny texture and this one is a matte texture. The lid on this is a pop top and the lid on this almost has like a wood feel and is a spin-off. So that's how I know this one is the Caudalie mask and this one is the fresh soy face cleanser. So I wanna show you a little bit of my beauty routine. Usually when I'm doing my makeup in the morning, I'll have my laptop playing some Netflix, my coffee, and that's just totally focused, zeroed in on my beauty products. I first really got into makeup when I was 12. I went home, I told my mom that I was really interested in playing with some makeup. She took me to a MAC counter. She got me professionally color matched, had them pick out all the products for me. And then it just became a matter of playing and practicing, listening to beauty tutorials on YouTube, which has just been building and building since then. As a blind makeup lover, there was nobody to teach me. You know, I really had to figure out my own unique techniques that worked for me, figured out tricks that worked for me, and I wanted to be able to kind of share a bit of what I've learned, not only with other blind beauty lovers, but also with sighted beauty lovers, because I feel like a lot of the tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way are actually applicable to everyone. And so I thought I can start YouTube as like this fun side hobby, this side project, and over the past four and a half years, it's turned into my main passion and what I feel like continues to be my purpose. Unfortunately, representation of disabled women in most industries doesn't really exist, media, fashion, and, and beauty. And when we are, it's typically kind of promoting a lot of the negative stereotypes that exist. Then lead people to come to my YouTube channel or my Instagram and be like, she's not blind because I don't look like this, you know, I'm not wearing the dark sunglasses. My eyes look normal. I look like a typical 25 year old woman that you would see on the streets. Disabled people are shown in a really negative light. People almost think we should be like really unaware and almost reliant on others and incapable of, of doing things for ourselves. But I went through years of, of specialized training. I took life skills courses where I was taught how to do like things like cook, clean, do my makeup and hair if I wanted to. With my platform, I try to really show the positive sides of of being a disabled woman because I feel like sometimes the online beauty community gets like a little bit of a bad rap because people are like, oh, it's so superficial, it's nothing, but like girls putting on makeup, wanting to look good. For me, beauty and fashion continues to be so much more than about that. It's what helped me find my confidence again after vision loss and losing so much of my life and myself. Now it's something for me that isn't even about what it looks like. I can't look in the mirror. I'm lucky enough to feel just as confident leaving my house without makeup as I feel leaving my house with it. It's about the art, the creativity, the fun, the experimentation, and, and really the ritual and rot routine of self-care that I experience every morning when I sit here with myself, my coffee, and my, my Netflix, and I just have that time. Thank you so much, Allure, for coming and hanging out in my beauty space. I hope you enjoyed it, seeing maybe how I do some things in a unique way, and we'll see you next time.